We live in an amazing time when it comes to animation. Long gone are the days where a team of hundreds of people and millions of dollars were required to create a feature quality piece of animation. Today, no matter who you are or where you are, you have access to powerful animation tools and hardware to fill in all of those roles that those hundreds of people and those millions of dollars were needed to create some animation. We live in a new golden age for animation and animators. And animation is everywhere. It's on your smartphones, your favorite YouTube channels, movies, TV shows, and games. And while of course animation is still being produced by the biggest studios in the world, the power of animation is accessible to anyone, anywhere. And that is amazing. In this video today, I want to take you on a bit of a behind the scenes journey through the creation process of an animated short that I made with a few friends called The Tale Teller. The Tale Teller is a 10 minute animated short which took a production time of about 10 months to complete. The piece has about 60 individual animation sequences and was worked on full time by just two people, myself and the environment artist, Greg Bartlett. We also got the help of some other talented people along the way, such as a voice actor and a musician, but we'll get to that later. And I wanna start from the very beginning. I really hope that by divulging this process, those of you who are interested in creating your own animations can realize how accessible it is and how approachable it can be. The first stage of the project was the same as the first stage on any project, and that is conceptualization. The desire to create the animation project came from my own personal desire to make something a bit more up to date with my own personal animation skills, as it had been about six years since I created anything substantial. And then beyond that, I also wanted to create a piece that I could connect with personally and really sink my teeth into. I asked my friend Greg Bartlett, who I've worked with several times before, if he would be on board with helping me out with this project if we were to get funding to help us and he agreed. So at that stage I began to immerse myself in research, essentially reading and listening to different stories and folklore. In particular I wanted to capture the feeling and essence of tales told by the brothers Grimm and Charles Perrault. Through that research process I found myself engrossed in not only the stories told by the brothers Grimm but the story of the brothers Grimm themselves. Initially I thought of the brothers Grimm much in the same way that many people do in a romanticized way like they were people people who traveled from place to place and wrote down stories they were told. But the reality is that they were academics and where they were originally studying to be lawyers, their law professor actually awakened a passion for philology in them. And had they not have been the amazing collectors and tellers of tales that they were, we would be missing such a huge part of our storytelling culture that we've carried with us into the modern day. And the result of this research process left me with an image in my head of an old traveling storyteller who had spent time collecting stories from all around the world and who wanted to pass them on before he died. The message I wanted to convey through the story was of the importance of storytelling and the legacy of stories and also the reality that sometimes the impact we make and the stories we tell might not actually be seen in our lifetime. Looking back, I can also see how this is a theme that's always resonated with me quite deeply in pieces like The Composer, an animated short I made when I was about 19 years old, and also the Draw My Life video on my YouTube channel. I've always personally and emotionally been really connected to the themes of legacy and storytelling and our impact through our creativity on others in the world. So it wasn't long after that that the concept started to solidify and it was soon time to move on to the pre-production process. Pre-production began with a script, and at the time that I wrote The Tale Teller, I was heavily influenced by the work of Shane Khoisan, a spoken word artist who uses poetry and rhythm really effectively to engage the emotions of the viewers. And I attempted to do a similar thing by using the voice of a narrator to tell the story of The Tale Teller and to change the rhythm and the tone and pace throughout to help engage the viewer and to help control the emotional tone throughout the piece. Writing the piece of poetry called the Tale Teller took me about five days full time for about five pages of writing. And it was really difficult because using rhythm and rhyme and poetry in a way that doesn't come across as too cheesy was 
a bit difficult. I also knew that this was the most pivotal stage of the production because everything would be based on that poem. The visuals, the music, everything. Once I was happy with the script, I recorded myself reading the poetry as the narrator as an example for the open casting call so that people who wanted to audition to be the narrator would know the tone I was going for and then would send in their auditions. We had over 350 auditions. In the end, there were five that were pretty close to the final piece, but the audition of Toby Ricketts was the one that absolutely nailed it. And he was the one we decided to work with moving forward. Toby Ricketts. So he rested in the square, only one thought in his head. Not about the lack of bedding or the food he wasn't fed. Oh no, for in the dead of night, the tale teller said, I wish to pass my stories on before the day I'm dead. Next, I created the concept art for the characters who would be telling the story. There's a link in the description to a video I did on the creation process of that concept art and how it evolved into the final character designs. And then from there, I created the storyboards that we would use as the foundations for the visuals of the animation. With the foundation of the project ready to go, the script and the storyboards lined up and a voice actor audition process taking place, I was ready to apply for funding. And it so happened that Screen Australia and Google had an initial put together called Skip Ahead, which was aimed at funding YouTubers with ambitious episodic projects. So I applied for the funding and fortunately we were approved and we could begin production on the Tale Teller. Now I want to put a quick note here that funding from a grant or an organization isn't essential or necessary to create ambitious animation projects, but in the scenario in which I have a studio to run and a family to feed, it was a pretty important part of the process. And so we structured things in a way that would enable us to apply for that funding and then for that funding to facilitate our creation process. But literally every other animation project I've ever created has been done without such a funding. It just so happens that my life circumstances now sort of require it. <laughs> the voice recording session with Toby Ricketts took place over Skype and took a total of about five hours to record. Again, this was another one of those things that I was really, really picky about because I knew how much would depend on the delivery and the way that that voice mixed with everything else in the piece. Toby was incredibly patient throughout the entire process and delivered a result that I was ecstatic about. Now with a final voice recording of the narrator and storyboards to use as a foundation, along with the fact that we'd been funded by Google and Screen Australia, I was now ready to jump into the animation process. And the first step was to create an animatic. An animatic is essentially a really scribbly, ugly looking version of the final piece of animation. The animatic doesn't require any fancy drawings or illustrations. It all comes down to the character placement, gestures, the camera positions, the scene transitions, and the time it takes to go from scene to scene, from shot to shot. With a finished animatic to use as a reference through the animation production process, things get a lot more straightforward because you're essentially animating one scene at a time using that animatic as a reference. But of course, the work starts taking a lot longer and requiring a lot of polish and patience. My experience in creating games and animations has taught me, sometimes the hard way, that the preparation and planning process is the most important part of making a project viable. So using the final animatic as a reference, the environment artist and myself created production schedules so we could identify what areas of work would take the most time and what areas of work we would need each other's art and assets for. We used these production schedules to combine them in a way that allowed us to work with each other without creating bottlenecks. As I mentioned previously, the environment art for the animation was created by Greg Bartlett. He had himself created concept artwork as a foundation for the design of the town square location in the animation, a location that would entail most of the animation, but would also be carried through different color schemes and visual seasons. He then used screenshots of the very sketchy, scribbly looking backgrounds from the animatic as a reference for the position of the camera and the viewing angle of each of the shots in the scene. So it would line up neatly with the animation and positioning of the characters. The environment art was created in an entirely vector-based format using Adobe Animate, which allows for a potentially unlimited amount of detail as you can zoom in as much as you want and add more and more to a scene without any pixelation or distortion from manipulation. This is of course with the exception of a few scenes which were part of the storytelling sequences, the environments of which were painted in Adobe Photoshop using custom Photoshop brushes. 
The animation production itself then consisted of creating a more refined animatic, essentially starting to refine the motion and physicality of the characters more, but still using quite a sketchy look to keep the production relaxed and loose and still at a reasonable pace. Once things felt pretty solid, I could then move on to creating the solid line art of each of the characters. Then the artwork was coloured in frame by frame at times, depending on the complexity of the animation. And this animation production process was repeated for every scene of the animation, starting with the environment art, passed on to character, environment and camera animation, then rendering until we had all of the parts for a final animation. Now in the past in my animation projects I would create the entire animation in one file. Lately I find it much more preferable to create every individual scene in its own file so that changes can be applied quickly and readily and without risking losing the entire thing in case of a catastrophe or power outage that corrupts a file or something like that which I will actually say happened once when the power went out and I lost a day's work in one small scene of animation and I am so thankful that I worked the way that I had and didn't lose the entire work and instead had to just redo one day's work. Each of these individual Animate CC scenes were rendered into video and imported into Adobe Premiere Pro. The Premiere Pro working file for the Telltaler feels a little bit like an Inception style layering of sequences. So the most internal and first sequence contains all of those raw video files from all the individual scenes cut to fit carefully to the voice and then later the music. That sequence was then imported into a new sequence where video overlays were applied to create more layers of effects. For example, the rain in the scene of the ship, the tail of the mouse upon the mast, Rather than painstakingly trying to animate the rain to be as realistic as possible, but potentially unconvincingly so, I used high quality stock footage as video overlays for those scenes and varied its position and sizing with every shot to feel organic and natural with the camera motion. The same can be said with the application of snow in the winter season and with miscellaneous effects in the battle flashback and in the tale told to the widow. Finally, all of that was placed inside one more sequence, which then had some final things like titles, credit screens, and color and level tweaks and manipulation through the process of the animation so that I could change the saturation, the contrast, and the hues as the story was told to really lift and then tone down different aspects and scenes of the animation. The very last part missing for the animation was the music. I knew that I wanted an orchestral and dynamic piece of music to help tell the story, but I also know from experience that actually recording and executing a piece of music like that in production is very time consuming and even more so if one is not familiar with the piece of music that they're recording. So I planned ahead because I knew that the music had to be at least 10 minutes long and be quite complicated due to the nature of the narration itself and the visuals and the themes that would be changing throughout the animation. So I'd actually composed the music of the tale teller very early on in the production process using the voice of the narrator and the visuals of the animatic as my foundation to work from. And once I had composed the music, which took about a week's full-time work using the animatic and narrator as a reference, slowly but surely over the coming eight months, I would practice the piece once every night until by the time it came to actually recording and creating the orchestral piece of music, I knew the piece back to front and was completely familiar with it and confident to play it again and again, section by section. This then enabled me to, without any inhibitions, create each of the layers for the different orchestral instruments in the piece, some of which were pre-planned and some of which were improvised through the recording process. And then after I'd created a foundation of an orchestral piece of music, there was one piece of the puzzle left to add, and that was an authentic voice to really help the music carry through. That musical authenticity came in the form of my friend Matthew Westwood, who is actually someone I met many years ago busking on the streets of Melbourne. He's a talented musician and composer himself, and he agreed to come on board and help out and play violin for the piece, which was really essential because at the end of the day, no matter how much work you do to create a believable orchestral sound using digital instruments, adding something real like the voice of a violin to a piece like that can entirely change the tone of the piece and make it all that much more believable and emotional and authentic.
After the production of the music was complete, I got the help of my friend Zach Strifle, who mixed all of the audio together of the narrator, the music, and of course added some ambience and sound effects. And all of those pieces together, then rendered and uploaded to YouTube, resulted in the final piece of animation, free for people to enjoy, called The Tale Teller. I'm sure you've gathered through this video that the production process was insane and it was really difficult and time consuming. It was a really hard slog and there were some days that were 20 hour work days back to back, but the result is something that everyone who worked on it was incredibly proud of and excited to share. There is something fulfilling and absolutely beautiful about working on a piece of art that you are emotionally completely connected to and that resonates with you personally. And I really hope that this video doesn't serve to intimidate anyone from the animation process, rather to help articulate the process's steps and ways that it can be accomplished even to a smaller degree if you're someone who's starting off and is interested in animation. And I can say personally that the payoff from creating something that you're connected to is absolutely amazing. Before working on The Tale Teller, I knew I wanted to make something that I was proud of and that I could look back at five years later and say, look at what I made. After finishing the project and sharing it with the world, we can definitely say that we achieved that and are proud of the result, but something that we achieved that I hadn't anticipated, which was all the sweeter, is that my son loves The Tale Teller. There have been times where he's been upset or we've been traveling on a 24 hour flight and the only thing that has held him together and engaged him fully was the tale teller. He could be doing absolutely anything, happy or sad, but if we put the tale teller in front of him, he'll stop whatever he's doing and just get sucked into it and watch it and dance along with the music. And I can't even explain how amazing that feels. I feel like the way this project was finished and then passed on is a little bit poetic and this is just me being sentimental and really personal about this project but at the end of the day while we got to make something we felt was ambitious and our best work yet and while we also got to share that with the world and have hundreds of thousands of people enjoy that and give us such kind feedback after all that the thing that's left the biggest impression on me is the effect that the tale teller animation has on my son. To be completely honest I think that's absolutely beautiful and when at the start of this video I said that today is a new golden age for animation I mean that completely you don't need millions of dollars you don't need hundreds of people just one person can create a personal piece of content that is just amazing and that that is accessible to all of us is a miracle and it's so exciting I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look into the creation process of The Tale Teller. If you're interested in watching the animation, the link is in the description. And if you're interested in diving further into the behind the scenes and the development process, check out the link in the description, which goes to the development pack and the music pack, so you can see how it was all put together and access those resources in more depth. I wish you all the best of luck in creating your own stories and telling the tales that you have to tell. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching and supporting my content. Make sure to check out the other parts of the Tale Tellers mini documentary series on independent animation by clicking the annotations on the screen or in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and share this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more art and animation content. Until next time, I'll see you later.